Some of you are gonna think that I'm over-exaggerating or making something or nothing, but this is a this is a public service announcement right now. Um, today we're gonna go over how to use one of the most underrated yet most important tools in the shop. Some think they know how to run this thing correctly, but I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. It's sad to think that it's come to this. You'd think that people would know how to use this, but they don't. What I'm talking about is the broom. Something as simple as a push broom Nobody really knows how to operate it correctly. We've got a lot who think they do, or maybe they use it, but not to its fullest capacity. So this video is going to go over things that I found as a teacher. Uh, this is my eighth school year teaching, but it's every year I have to go over how to use a broom. I mean, you wouldn't think that I had to teach this sort of thing, but we do, so pay attention, take notes, there will be a test. First, I think I'm probably gonna show you how not to use a broom. Uh, these are some legitimate ways I've seen kids use brooms in my shop and in industry where I've worked. When I talk to my stakeholders, which are businesses in my surrounding area that I may be feeding kids to, to for them to hire, for them to have employees, a lot of the more common things when I ask, hey, what can I do? Like, how can I teach these kids, get them better to uh, be better employees for you? A lot of them are like, well, you know, we'll train them uh, as long as they can pee clean and show up on time. And they've got those soft skills. And what those soft skills are, are your basic knowledge that you would assume everybody knows, but they do need to be taught like cleanliness, how to clean up, keep your area clean, your workstation clean, all the way down to the clerical side of things of filling out your time card correctly and things like that. I'm gonna go over on how to not use a broom and how to properly use a broom. As silly as it may sound, but gotta do it. Somebody has to. What the hell, man? Get out of my way. Sweeping here. Uh, you call that sweeping? You're dang right I call it sweeping. You can eat off the floor, I sweep. You call your sweeping? Look at all that dust. Why don't you make me? Look, just get out of my way before money sees me. I don't want him to get mad at me again. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. You don't want him mad. What'd you do? Well, you know how it's really fun to like throw hammers around, see how, how many twirls you can get in one toss and, and you catch it, you know? Have you ever done that? <laughs> oh yeah, I've done that a time or two. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so much fun. Well, the other day I was doing it again and he had already told me like four or five times not to do it, but you know, <laughs> well, I was throwing it in it right in the middle of the air. He had, He'd yelled at me, you know, you know how he yells so loud. Well, 
I, I'm not kidding. I think I three or four drops of pee came out. <laughs> yeah, I I know what you mean. The other day I was just going to town on my chipping hammer and cleaning the slag and I got a little carried away and I was just going to town and he yelled at me and it caught me so off guard I, I'm pretty sure I dropped a fear nugget in my pants. <laughs> yeah, fear nuggets. Well, anyways, just, just get out of my way. <laughs> I ain't moving for you. You probably don't even know how to TIG weld. Why don't you make me? I, I know how to, I know TIG. Just, just get out of my way, all right? What the hell, man? Now that that's out of the way, we're gonna go through some actual correct uses of this very complicated equipment right here. First, we're gonna talk about our push broom. Okay, this guy is used for cleaning. Push it, or you can even pull it, and it will pick up dirt, dust, metal whatever you need sweeping up except for tools you should probably pick them up first so it only works in two directions okay forward and backward now you can uh, run these sideways if you're let's say going up underneath something I'm telling you it's just two directions forward and backward that's it right we have our dust pan and our dust broom. This is used to hold the stuff you swept up and this is to sweep it into this pan. All right, when you're finished sweeping up, whatever you're cleaning up, whatever area you're working in, take a dust pan, take a dust broom and pick it up. Okay, don't leave it around. I've had kids say, oh, I swept. Well, what about the pile you left over there? Oh, I wasn't doing the dust broom. That was someone else. Pick, pick it up, okay? Uh, after you do sweep this into the dust pan, there's gonna be a little bit of a line there left. Okay, don't just kick that or sweep it up underneath something. Uh, dump what you've already picked up, go back and get as much of that picked up as you can. All right, it's not rocket science. Okay, now I'm gonna demonstrate how to properly sweep in live time so there's no questions, okay? I will show you a point of view on how it's actually supposed to look. So you're gonna push and then make like a half a step, okay? And coming back after every stroke or every push, okay? The reason we do that is Every push you do this, you're going to leave streaks. It's not going to pick up everything. And when you come back over each time, you're making sure that you've picked up all the stray pieces that make it through that bristle. As you can see, we've got some stuff here on the ground. I'm going to work around in a circle, pushing all the way. Once you've gotten a pretty good pile going, just start working your way around. Now you can see how I'm I'm kind of starting sideways then pushing. That's when I'm working my way around a circle. I turn my broom this way when I am going around my pile to tighten it up. And little by little, you can see it getting tighter and tighter. You can push like this. This works great too. This is so we can tighten up that little pile so that our dustpan can come in and pick it up. All right, every now and then I will knock the broom on the ground to let any of the excess dust or anything in those bristles out and then i'll sweep it up now on to the dust broom <sighs> i think if you if you think back to kindergarten and you played them games one of these things is not like the other is that wrench supposed to be in there are we going to throw that away no so grab the wrench or whatever other tool get it separated 
And when you're pushing these into the dustpan, this edge, no matter how sharp they're gonna be on dustpans, is still going to leave a little line. So I'll push and get everything up in the pan and then change directions. Alternating it just enough to get it from different angles and I'll keep trying to sweep it in as I pull backward just to get as much of that as possible. I mean, we're still gonna have a tiny little bit, but that's better than a huge long streak. So this is a metal shop and we don't put our steel in the regular trash can, all right? If we have a bunch of metal in our pile, a plate or what have you, we're gonna put that in the scrap bin. So this excess spent wire or electrodes, we're gonna separate that and we're not gonna throw it away in the garbage. If I see a whole bunch of electrodes or wire in the garbage, I will turn it over and dump it out and the whole class will have to sift through it and pick out all the steel. You don't have to take the time to get every little tiny piece, but the bulk pieces is what I'm talking about. I don't want any giant pieces of steel in our garbage can. Once you've got the bulk picked through and put in the scrap bin, this is a real important part in the last step. All right, that's how you throw away your garbage, okay? Sometimes there's a little bit of dust here. I like you to sit and brush this off, get any extra dust off of here. Sometimes it's a good idea to take this dust broom and run it against these ridges here. That's what they're there for and get some of that excess off, and then you can brush it in the garbage. You've probably seen a broom like this. These are common in kitchens and whatnot at home, but these are also important in shops and workspaces because this smaller broom can fit into tighter areas to get all of the nooks and crannies, all right? When we're out in the shop, don't just sweep the areas that are clear. I want you to actually sweep in and around things. I'll show you. For instance, when you're cleaning your booth, we have our welding station here and it's got a post and it's bolted to the ground. You'll need a broom like this so you can get in and around these areas. That push broom's not gonna be able to fit in there. The other thing you need to remember, a lot of our stuff's on wheels. So when you clean your booth or anything, move it so you can sweep up underneath it if possible. We want it as nice and clean as possible to prevent any kind of injuries, boo-boos, slips, trips, falls, anything like that. Anything flammable, especially. 